Hello and welcome to my code coffee. In this chapter we will understand what is simplified payment verification or SPV node, how SPV node does transaction verification and then we will compare SPV node with full node. So what is an SPV node? An SPV node is a lightweight node which does not maintain full blockchain but instead maintains the header of the blocks. Header of the block is thousand times lighter than full block and that is why it is called lightweight node. SPV node is particularly popular as wallet and this type of wallet is called SPV wallet or lightweight wallet. A wallet needs to have two very important features. Number one, it should store the transactions which is owned by its users and number two, it should be able to confirm these transactions. If you already know about block structure, you understand that header of the block contains hash of the header of previous block which is helpful in arranging the blocks in the blockchain or in other words, it is helpful in forming the chain of blocks. Of course, in case of SPV node, this is simply the chain of header of the blocks and not full blocks. You also know that header of the block does not contain transactions. However, it contains the summary of transactions called Markle root. In the chapter of Markle tree, I explained that to prove whether a transaction belongs to a particular block or not, you will need that transaction along with Markle path. So SPV node gets transactions belonging to the wallet users along with Markle path. With the help of Markle path, SPV node calculates Markle root and attaches the transaction to the right block header. Now since SPV node does not have all the transactions, it has no way to verify the transaction by searching previous transactions the way full nodes do because SPV node may or may not have previous transaction. So SPV node waits to get at least six blocks on top of the existing block to which transaction belongs. Once it gets six more blocks on top of it, it assumes that the transaction is valid and confirmed. Because by the very nature of blockchain, a block below six blocks becomes immutable. So now if we compare SPV node with full node, we see that whereas full node maintains full blockchain, SPV node only maintains the chain of header of the blocks. Whereas full node downloads all transactions, SPV node downloads selective transactions because they are interested in only those transactions which belong to the users of its wallet. Whereas full node is able to verify the transaction by tracking back previous transactions all the way down to first block or genesis block, SPV node attaches the transaction to the block with the help of Markle path and then waits for six more block headers. Once it gets at least six more blocks headers on top of the header belonging the transaction, it assumes that the transaction is valid and confirmed. So you see that while full node verifies the transactions with reference to its height and SPV node verifies the transactions with reference to its depth. Obviously maintaining chain of headers which is thousand times lighter than full blockchain is great advantage because this type of node can run in resource constraints environment. But if you think about some of the disadvantages, since SPV nodes do not have full picture of the transactions, it is vulnerable to double spending attack. To defend itself, SPV node must connect randomly to several other nodes so that it is in contact with at least one honest node. This need to randomly connect to several nodes can also lead to another type of attack called network partitioning attack. We will learn about various type of blockchain attacks in upcoming chapters. Despite all these issues, a well-connected SPV node are quite secure. It strikes a balance between resource needs and security. However, when it comes to foolproof security, there is no comparison with full node. I mentioned earlier that SPV nodes download selective transactions because they are interested in only those transactions which belong to the users of its wallet. However, this approach can lead to privacy risk because if all transactions belong to wallet users, a third party monitoring the transactions can associate Bitcoin address with the user of that wallet. Yes, it's not that straightforward, but the possibility is high if there is a guarantee that all the transactions downloaded by this wallet belongs to the users of wallet only. To avoid this type of risk, SPV nodes use a feature called Bloom filters. In next chapter, we will understand about this very feature. Hope you enjoyed this chapter. Stay tuned for next chapter about Bloom filters. Thank you so much 
and enjoy my cold coffee. If you now want to move to the next chapter, you can click on this card. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way. For easy navigation to all chapters, visit mycodecoffee.com. Thank you so much for watching.